Okay, in this section we'll talk about how to do it. I will give you two axioms, two abilities, and one strategy. 99% of the problems can be solved in five moves, okay? Let's talk about the first axiom first, scarcity. At any time, anyone, and any resource are scarce. Then we can draw three conclusions. The first is time cost, the second is comparative advantage, and the second is maximum weight. Let's talk about time cost first, there is no free lunch. Even if this meal is free, you will still waste time when eating. Because you could have used this time to earn money. The price of this meal is equal to the money you could have earned during this meal's time. So don't think that free means you'll save money. The first one is the maximum weight. The most useless chicken soup in the world is to find a hundred reasons and tell you that each one makes sense. The real world is weighted. Among a hundred reasons, there may be only one that is really important. Which one is the most difficult to adjust? That is, always only do the most critical thing. Okay, let's talk about Axiom 2 again. Income is equal to flow times realization. There are two variants of this axiom. One is to quantitatively describe the nature of the transaction, and the other is to quantitatively calculate whether it is profit or loss. Let's start with the first quantitative description of the essence of business. We believe that the essence of many businesses is traffic. Buy low and sell high means you buy customers at low prices and then cash out these customers at high prices. The difference in the middle is your profit. For example, if you are a barber shop, right, if you rent a popular shop, you will acquire customers in batches, which is equivalent to wholesale. So every time you get a haircut, it is equivalent to realizing the high retail price and the price difference is profit. The same goes for a PP, in the only one who invested in advertising, and am here to acquire customers in batches. Then the membership fees I charge each person are realized at my high retail price. And the difference in the middle is the profit. Then let's look at the quantitative calculation to see whether it is profit or loss. This is the input-output ratio. This means how much money can you make for every 100 yuan you invest. If you can make money, continue. If not, optimize or give up. For example, take Dujia. How much money can you make by investing 100 yuan in TikTok? For example, if SEM invests 100 yuan in ranking in Google, how much money can you make? Another example is many internet advertisements. How much does a CPC click cost? How much does a CPA download cost? How much does a CPM sign display cost? How much does a CPS transaction cost? That is, from dithering to SM to CPC, CPA, CPM, which seem to be irrelevant. But essentially they are all the same thing. They are all measuring the input-output ratio. But in the internet industry, it is easier to quantify and achieve precise delivery. We will focus on this in the future. Next we have to look at an ability, which is learning ability. There are four skills in learning ability, namely popularization, payment, imitation, and splitting. Let's talk about the first one first. Generally speaking, you ignore the definition first. Search for popular explanations first and ignore such complicated definitions. How important is this? Is that why many people have trouble learning something? Why do you always find studying so difficult? Why do I feel sleepy as soon as I pick up the textbook? Because this learning method is wrong from the beginning. They are relying on common sense to define. And once you learn this technique, it is almost like a miracle. You can save 90% more time. If you can't learn it, you will be scared to death by various definitions every day. Hey, why am I sostipid? If you don't learn how to do something else, 99% of people will be scared away. Remember, the definition is for rigorous expression. It is not for beginners to enlighten. Once again, the definition is used to express it rigorously, not to enlighten beginners like you. Let me show you two examples. For example, an FT. What is the definition of an FT? Let me read it to you again. An FT is an abbreviation for non-fungible tokens, which is different from homogeneous tokens such as Bitcoin and Ethereum that can be replaced by each other, have unity, and can be almost infinitely different. It is independent and cannot be exchanged for one or divided. Then the smart contract is signed with a kind of information that can be used for identification, which means that each NFT has a unique information number.
So an FT also becomes a record and storage. An option for digital product ownership, including art, games, collectibles. Do you understand what it means? No? Okay. Then let's say that the popular explanation in FT is the fingerprint of the work. Because it has your fingerprint on it. That's what it means. How did Cherry explain it? An FT is equivalent to a paternity test. You can understand it at a glance. For relative differences, let's look at another blockchain. How to define the blockchain? Blockchain is a new application model of computer technology, such as distributed data storage, point-to-point -point transmission, consensus mechanism, encryption algorithm, etc. It is an important concept of Bitcoin. It is essentially a decentralized database and as the underlying technology of Bitcoin. It is a series of pieces that are related using cryptographic methods. Understand? Probably in it, right? So had is the popular explanation, blockchain. At the wedding banquet, the second uncle, the third uncle, the seventh aunt, the eighth aunt, all the relatives and friends came, and they all came to see you to getting married. That means you two are married. You said it's impossible for you not to be married. I've seen it all. So what does blockchain mean? It's like everyone testifies together. You'll understand it just by looking at it, right? Why are you digging out those definitions? Do I need to be that accurate? No need. Then how did Cherry explain it? Blockchain is equivalent to anti-counterfeiting technology. You can understand it at once. And the difference in efficiency is huge. Another tip is to use short video search more often. You know there are usually two ways of sorting. For example, conventional sorting, such as algorithm sorting and machine sorting, requires secondary screening. For example, if you search for something on Google, you think it is good. But you have to open it one by one to see if you still have a screening cost. As for short video search, you can sort by likes. It has user data, which is simple and intuitive, and more convenient. I don't know what you're talking about. Good. In the second step, the torso sinks slowly. The upper arm and the torso form an angle of 45 degrees. The angle between the forearm and the upper arm is less than 90 degrees. And inhale when the knees sink. Third, exhale as you push up. Use your pectoralis major muscles. And use your arm strength to push your trunk up until your elbow joint is fully extended. I don't know what it is about, but if you use short video search, it is refined, multi-dimensional, simple and intuitive. For example, what are the essentials of push-ups? Come and see what I'm doing is right. Stand up and inhale and exhale. Yes, that's it. You see the huge difference in efficiency. Remember this sentence. Only if you don't have the ability do you need to make a long speech. Okay, let's talk about the second tip. When you pay, you must pay for knowledge. Many people are unaware of this importance. As you know, many people achieve nothing, not necessarily because they don't work hard, but because they can't distinguish the pros and cons, and they can't tell which is more important. They can never let go of what they have, so they can never exchange it for something more important. What is the core of economics? It means giving up, giving up something less important for a more important thing. It will always be like this, there will never be the best of both worlds. Even if you buy clothes in both colors, you can only wear one at a time. If you think about a question, what is the essence of efficiency? It is the exchange ratio, that is, the difference between the rich and the rich is not money, but the exchange ratio of time. There are only 24 hours. How can we maximize the output? So don't always focus on your money, but focus on your labor. Focus your limited energy on the most important things and only do the most important thing. People who don't understand the exchange ratio will have a hard time. He just sees the current money, but cannot see the unearned money slipping through his fingers. Next, let's talk about the principle of paying for knowledge. Let's talk about business first. Payment is business. Business is everywhere. Your basic necessities. Food, clothing, housing and transportation are essentially a division of labor and exchange. Only with division of labor can everyone's productivity be improved. Why can division of labor improve productivity? One is proficiency. The wealth of nations contains an article on the division of labor. If there is division of labor, one person can produce for 1,800 pieces a day. But without division of labor, he can only produce 20 pieces a day. The difference is hundreds of times worse. 
The second is to reduce switching. The intermediate links consume a lot of energy. But if there is division of labor, these links can be cut off. If we do 10 things at the same time, we will waste a lot of time switching between each thing. But if there is a division of labor and everyone focuses on their own part, some links can be omitted. The third is to simplify the task. Everyone does an extremely simple task so that the machine can be used on a large scale. Why can you increase productivity without division of labor? But understand this, let's talk about payment for knowledge. Payment for knowledge is a kind of business. If you think about it carefully, why don't you knit your own clothes? Because it's cheaper for you to buy it. So why don't you study it from scratch? Because paying for knowledge is cheaper. Same thing. What are the benefits of paying for knowledge? Time cost, opportunity cost, and division of labor efficiency. Let's talk about the time cost first. That is, you don't have to start from scratch. And you can save time to do more important things. The second one is opportunity cost. You don't have to worry about trying to figure it out. But the bonus period has disappeared. Another one is the efficiency of division of labor. You improve your own by buying other people's time. Key efficiency dot dot how to pay. There are two levels. One is the plan level and the other is the detail level. At the plan level, you buy courses, which means you buy plans that others have already studied and mature and use them. For example, he was ready to buy the shooting and lighting techniques for oral short videos. He has written a short video copywriting improvement course and bought it. I don't know how to improve the performance of the lens. I need to buy it. How to control your voice and talk for a long time without getting tired. I wouldn't buy it just yet. There is also a detailed level of purchasing labor, which is to find someone who is familiar with the operation to help you operate it and save effort. For example, how to install PR. Just give me some money and he'll install it for you. How to use this garbage. Hey, just give you some money and he will do it for you. You have to explore it yourself. This time cost is very, very high. Remember this sentence, the original society does not need to pay fees. The third technique is to imitate the principle. Because the real world is too complex and you have too many key points to describe. The core point at this time is precisely those details that are difficult to describe. And through imitation, you can effectively grasp this key point and get this real weight point. For example, if the same song is sung by different people, it will have completely different feelings. But the music scores are obviously exactly the same. In other words, the score is not the whole thing, it is just the skeleton part. What really moves people are the invisible details and expressions. If you just look at the score, you'll miss a lot of important things. At this time, you need to imitate. For example, find a singer you particularly like. Listen to it over and over again, and repeat it over and over again. At this time, you will slowly discover many details. Hey, for example, why do you sigh slightly in this place? Why do you make the sound heavier in this place? The specific operations of imitation are divided into two types. One is input and one is output. Let's talk about input first, massive input, crazy input. If you read 300 Tang poems, you will be able to do a few things that you don't know how to do. If you look at the same area a thousand times, you will slowly be able to build a complete map. If you watch the same video a thousand times, you will become familiar with the details and form a conditioned reflex. The output is to be restored at the cell level, and it must be recorded with real output. You can't talk about your brain. The function of output is that, first of all, it determines whether you have really mastered it. Because output is equal to the test, without the test, you will never know which piece you are missing. Secondly, you can accurately find where the difference is. These different details are often the key points of the entire problem. The fourth skill is to split a big problem into 10 small problems. For example, if the song is too complex, I will break it up, shorten it a little, then make it shorter, one bar per note, and then test how to play it with my left and right hands. And slowly, I will be able to play this short section. A little longer, a little longer, a little longer, the left hand mastered it. The right hand mastered it, and slowly a complex piece of music came out. For example, if the design is too complicated, and I am modeling a tank, then I will dismantle the turret. If the vehicle still has tracks that are not working, I will continue to dismantle it. 
I will continue to dismantle it indefinitely, turning a big problem into a ten small questions. So the difficulty of each one will be much lower. The same goes for short videos. Let's break it down. What does a short video mean? It's equal to traffic and monetization, right? What does traffic include? Positioning, photography, copywriting, and expressiveness. For example, let's talk about shooting. Shooting is divided into colorful lights, sounds, and post-production environment, right? Done one by one. What are the types of copywriting? What are the continuous structure structures of topic selection? That's it for the beginning, the finishing touches, and the ending, right? Then let's look at the monetization, that is, the monetization method. And the monetization efficiency will be broken down step by step. Remember this sentence. If it is difficult for you, break it down. If it is still difficult, continue to break it down. Then in the end, if you solve this problem, the big problem will also be solved. Next, we will talk about the second ability, analytical ability. The analytical ability is divided into two parts. One is logical analysis and the other is a B-test. Let's talk about logical analysis first. There are two core logics. One is common sense and the other is an anomaly. The so-called common sense, we start from common sense and basic axioms. This is the deduction method. For example, in Einstein's biography, he mentioned this sentence, which is Einstein's own perception. The further we go, and the broader our theories become, the less empirical knowledge is required to determine them. For example, the starting point of special relativity is the principle of relativity and the principle of the constant speed of light. Let's talk about anomalies. The so-called anomalies are to summarize the general rules and find abnormal results to deduce the core factors. Its essence is an inductive method. For example, let's look at a few examples. For example, the takeout sorting. As a takeout person, how do you rank your store at the front? The premise is that you don't spend money. If you infer the rules, how do you know others? I do not know. Which part of the rules can put you at the front of the queue? This is the key. Then we have to start from common sense. That is, use common sense to judge which factors are conducive to ranking. Well, three, the closer the distance, the higher the ranking, right? Good reviews. The more positive reviews you have, the higher the ranking will be. Sales. The better the sales, the higher the ranking will be. This is common sense, right? Let's look at the anomalies based on our common sense. That is, if there is a store that meets these requirements and is ranked first, then you can ignore it because it is normal. But if there are some stores that do not comply with these rules and are still ranked high, these points should be focused on. After summarizing these, we found that there is one kind of store that is abnormal. That is, the new store. If this store is newly opened, it will often give you a better ranking as an incentive. So what is the principle behind this click-through rate when you click more? The system may think that this thing is of higher value to it. That is, when your click-through rate is high, the system will consider this thing to be of higher value to users. In other words, the relevant parameters affected by the click-through rate may be an important factor in ranking, which is also common sense. So what's the conclusion? This can be judged through common sense and exceptions. Let's look at another example. Web page ranking was very popular before because ranking at the top equals money. When you search for something on Google, if yours is at the top, it means good money. The question is, if you want to be ranked at the top, you have to know how Google, for example, uses as few data indicators as possible to judge the quality of a web page. He won't tell you. If you read all the SU optimization books, they will tell you three factors. One is PR, the other is bounce rate, and the other is click rate. What is per ITIS page rank, which is how many websites think you are awesome and link to you. But this is far from the final search result. It is not accurate because it can only identify echelon levels. There is no way to accurately rank one, two, or three. As for the second bounce rate, some people think that if I close it quickly after opening it, Google may think that this page is not good. But there are also a lot of searches. For example, I can check the celebrity's height and weight or some basic parameters and then close it after checking. There is no problem with that. That is to say, if you judge based on this bounce rate, 
you will lead to a lot of misjudgments and it will be inaccurate. For example, click-through rate, the more you click on it, the greater its value is, and the higher it will be ranked. But the title is not the same as the content. You know there are many searches that you click on and find that you are not what you want. And then you click on a few others, which is not accurate. So how do you know what indicators Google uses to judge the quality of a web page? This has to be based on axioms. What are the axioms of search? Why search in genes? Its axiom is to allow as many users as possible to find the results that best meet their needs in the shortest possible time. If he closes Google directly after clicking on the current search result and no longer needs to use it, it means he is satisfied. So what do you think this thing is used for? Hey, back off cut off. What does that mean? Thought us when the user clicks the back button of this browser, it will not work properly. That way, he won't fall back to his original Google search dot dot. As a result, Google thought it would improve rankings by turning it off. Ah, oh, what is the version of 2 o'clock? Add a back control JavaScript. You don't need to make any other modifications. And your traffic can be turned around quickly, which is very painful. This is the key to transformation. The same goes for short videos, which can also be judged with the help of common sense and anomalies. Let's talk about common sense first. What is common sense? Neaton's ceremonial homepage layout will effectively increase the conversion rate. So did you see my homepage? Secondly, by following similar accounts with high weight, you can increase the credibility of the account. This is the importance of content. Third, clearer picture quality and sound can lead to better broadcast completion. For example, if you look at these shots of mine, they are all at the common sense level. Let's look at the anomalies. For example, if the same person shoots almost the same things, why do some of them become popular? What's thetaference? Fat place is the key point. What is thefacus? What hair thetatales? The description is different, or it's a pure error. Let's do some research on this. Or if we talk about the same topic and different people take photos of it, why do some of them become popular? What's thetaference? Is it because the copywriting is different? The shooting ability is different? The expressiveness is different, or is it different somewhere? This place is the key point. After talking about the logical analysis, let's look at the A-B test. The core logic of A-B test is comparison. Just make two different plans and see which one is better. This is a double-blind experiment originating from medicine, where users are randomly assigned to two types, A and B, and receive the test drug and placebo without knowing it. After a period of testing, we will compare the two patients to see if there is any obvious difference, so as to determine whether the drug is effective. There are two principles for A-B testing. Remember it. The first operation cost is small enough, so it cannot take too long and the investment cannot be too large. The other is that the operation itself is almost impossible to bring negative effects, eliminating unnecessary losses. For example, Many internet companies often do a B testing. For example, for some advertisements, which title should I use better? I will play some of them. Finally, I will see which one converts better. Then I can replace the title in large quantities. Which punctuation should I use to attract consumers better? Va. Which layout is better and which color is better? This way, I can quickly trial and error and find the best solution. This is called A-B test. Remember this sentence, logical analysis is the framework, A and B tests are the details. The framework comes first and then the details. Okay, after talking about the two abilities, let's talk about a strategy, its differentiation. There are two ways to differentiate, one is to find gaps, and the other is to cross boundaries with common sense. You get a cold boiled, cooked water, while others are just drinking raw water. I opened up a new field to do cooked water, which is also a blank. Take rice wine for example. Others only put it in a big bag or a glass bottle, which is very troublesome to drink. As for you, if you make a bag of drinks, such as this drink, it is very convenient for him to do so. If others don't do this, if you do, there will be a gap, so you grab it. Another one is cross-border. That is, you try every means to crossbreed into a new species. For example, Let's look at an account called Agent who cooks gourmet food. What are his characteristics? 
On the one hand, he cooks delicious food. On the other hand, his documentaries are good. And thirdly, he is very good to his mother. These three are a crossover. You rarely see gourmet cooks who are particularly kind to their mothers. He is very filial. And filial piety is a new point. In this way, you can integrate a new species and make consumers feel that you are very different from others. For example, there is a happy life named Agui. He is a financial expert. And among financial experts, the most henpecked person is the one who is most afraid of his wife. This is also the emergence of a new species, which creates new excitement through various ways of crossing boundaries. Just remember one sentence, be the number one in the segmented industry. There are two key points in this sentence. One is segmentation. Segmentation means not to be big and comprehensive, and don't try to satisfy everyone. You can't satisfy everyone. The second number one is that you should never go behind others and always create a new battlefield. That is beneficial to you. This is your opportunity to make money, okay? After talking about these abstract methodologies, I will use myself as an example. I will dismantle it myself. And I will tell you how my account grew step by step from the time I started it to where I am now. How to pay attention to every link. How to find the real weight. And how to use these methods to analyze and solve every problem. I will talk about it later.